You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. If you don't have power, then by the light. They say, come there by the light. Come with you. You know, you say your body is tired. You are always complaining. You have not received power. You need to go and buy the Holy Spirit back into your life. You have not received power. Power is very essential. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can give power. It says, it is after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be witness to me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. What it means is that those who have the power of the Holy Spirit, they don't look, it's not difficult for them to preach. They can enter into a bus and say, uh, good morning, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I bring to you the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> I want to tell you something. <laughs> God loves you. That is why he gave his only begotten son in John 3, 16, to come and die for you and me. It is the death that Christ died for me that I have received that has liberated me. I don't know if you have Christ in your heart. I don't know if you have received him. But I'm urging you to receive him. And you know why? Liberation will come to you. You see all those pressing you in the dream. Once you receive Christ, that chapter will end your life. Any form of oppression, both men will come to you to do the work of God. So you need to receive Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to come to you. It is only the presence of the Holy Spirit that can make anybody to be bold about God. And when you are speaking, it takes over your phone. And it will not be your work. Me and my friend had gone to preach one day at the bus stop. We saw a man smoking for fifty. A young man, a young man, and we were just talking to him. We thought this guy, he would smoke it like this, smoke it. My friend, she stopped on too. So when she was preaching, he started speaking in tongues, praying. And then I would talk to him. At the end of this day, the guy told him, yeah, he started to cry. What is the problem? So the guy said, if he leaves here, he's going to commit suicide. Why? He said he has tried everything. He's, he's, he's even in the occult. He has come a call in his house. And different kind of things. But like everything done to him. So he's thinking of killing himself before we came to preach. He took him to our jail uh, house. That time we were still under canon. And he came to pay for him. They went to his house in Chester. They went to bring out all these demons. He gave his life to Christ. Me, I don't know after, but I went to his death. And I didn't come back to him. But I later heard that he was coming to church. So, preaching can change the story. I still remember once I went to preach to two lawyers. I just finished secondary school. I don't know grammar. I was just talking and talking and talking. That day after I think talking, they don't let me enter. And I call it where I do. They just open their doors to me. And I finished preaching. No, 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 you don't have to hear. I said, anybody is not your lady. You just have the doors. That day, the brother comes to our church. He says, Linda, if you put your mouth, they talk to my brother and his friend, Sammy, and the other one. Those two men are pastors to me. He said they just entered the room, they went to sleep. The next day they carried their Bible, they went to church. And that was how their life got changed, got transformed. And these young men, they became pastors to do. Praise the Lord. They will soon bring the light. <coughs> they became pastors to be. Do you think it was me that changed it? No. So was the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is in a place, do you know this reason we struggle in this church? It's because I would say half of the pastors, no Holy Spirit. All of the members, no Holy Spirit. All the workers, no Holy Spirit. That's why we're struggling. And we have no Holy Spirit that they've got to power for that place. We have no Holy Spirit that they always uh, mind their own selfish and personal business. You call them for church, they don't go answer you. But the day they're doing bad things, they cross them for inside you, you'll see them for church. No personal commitment 
So, so we are in train with Christ. So as workers, we are going to be praying more for the presence of the third man in the tree. The Holy Spirit. Do you know that the Holy Spirit gives him to the journey of life as workers? If you get the Holy Spirit, half of your problem is also. So why can't we desire the Holy Spirit? If you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, then the next thing is to have the Holy Spirit to come. If you think you have had the Holy Spirit and you are speaking in tongues, ask him to feed you yourself. Do you not know why the Bible says that you cannot take a new wine and put in an old wine skin? Have you not heard of that scripture? You can't take a new wine and put in an old wine skin because the wine skin will burst. So you need a new wine skin for a new wine. What it means is that there is always the presence of the Holy Spirit and the dispensation for us to be refreshed anew. This song says, Breathe on me, breathe on me, Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. Yesterday is gone, today I'm in me. Holy Ghost power, breathe on me. The Holy Ghost is always looking for fresh vessels. He's looking for new vessels, new things. If you start telling stories of how you made escapades in the Holy Spirit and it's not in you, it will not have any impact on anybody. So everybody has an opportunity to get a fresh in the presence of God. Amen. Amen. So remember that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, power will also come upon you. And when power comes upon you, you'll be able to be a witness. Do you all you think that Jehovah's Witness means? It means those people who are talking about Jesus Christ, God, they are witnessing. So you'll be able to witness. And witnessing means all around the world. Amen. Yes. Christ is coming to us. And the mission He has given us as a children is to witness. I pray that as we witness, we will know Him and we will understand Him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now I want us to briefly just mention, I'm not going to dwell on it. I want to mention that the Holy Spirit gives you power and it gives you boldness, like I said, as children of God. So if you say you are a child of God, you don't have boldness, you need the Holy Spirit. Jesus went away, like I told you. So that the comforter will come. And the comforter has things to do in our life. And somebody will ask, how does the Holy Spirit work? There are many ways that the Holy Spirit can work in the life of a Christian. And when the Holy Spirit works, that means you are sharing a common goal with Christ. You are sharing a common goal with Jesus. He's renewing you as a believer. That's why I said, the day you got born again 20 years ago, you see Holy Spirit, you are free to come again. He needs to renew your mind as a believer. He needs to convict you of sin and lead you to repentance. And when you have repented, He will wipe away your dirty past. And He will now allow you to start bearing good fruit. If you are a child of God and you have some shady, evil past in your life, it means that the Holy Spirit is not there. Because the Holy Spirit is light. When He comes, He will flood that next to you. So if there is some parts that people cannot know, or you cannot talk about them, you are not proud of it. of God, it means that the Holy Spirit is not there. But the Holy Spirit is not there. For you to be an effective believer, you need the Holy Spirit. If you look at Galatians 5, 22 to 23, can somebody look at it? It talks about the fruit of the tree. If you have the Holy Spirit, somebody will see that you have love. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will always be joyful like it's a trauma. It's not like she does not have her own personal problem. But anytime you see her, she's that. If you have the Holy Spirit, you will be peaceful. Somebody will not ask you why did you come late and you come to the tiger and you want to fight. You will be peaceful. If you have the Holy Spirit, the next one, you will be patient. 
A lot of us have made cheap work of our salvation because we are not patient. We want to get rich fast. We want to be a geo fast. We want to uh, drive car fast. We want to go naive. It's not all those things. Somebody like me for don't run. It's not all those things. I'm sorry to embarrass you. One, two, three, four, work as well. How many of you don't buy me 500 in one car? It's the day you don't need. So why will I be? Even the shoe, where they even buy for me, they see they contribute. Then they contribute, then they see the other day of you. Why we won't stay in the business of being church if it's not profitable? It is only the only seed that makes the difference. We are going to pray, but I want you to know that the only seed can make you kind. If you see somebody that does not have empathy, it's not kind, and he says he's born again, the only seed is that sense here. The only seed is not by yaka, 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 ya, da, 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 no. That is part of it, but it's not all of it. You need to be kind. There must be goodness flowing inside of you. And as a believer, you must be faithful. Not just faithful, gentleness, self-control. Somebody never thinks you, they don't hear your voice for the next trip, the next hour. Where is your self-control as a believer? Somebody has not talked to you, you started me, me, I have my own house. I have my own, I have my own. One minute started to preach one time. And while he was preaching, the Holy Spirit told him that one girl said, I bet you know that you carry yourself good. And the person did not talk about it. You remember that story? Now, from my mind, the man of God began to vote. He began to vote for saying, receive, say somebody say, in the ordinary person. Now, you can say, eh, they don't know if they come to a place, even I saw of that was foolishness and it was uncalled. Then I level. Somebody just came from for my day. One begin a sweat. If God wants you with us with all of the things we think in our mind, before they die there. The Lord will show me. That shows that that minister of God still needs the fruit of the spirit. May God give us self control. May God allow us to be gentle. Gentle not for devil, no. Gentle for your fellow human beings. May God grant us joy and love for one another. Be patient, be kind. Some of you, you will have more extra change, and they will be begging you to cross your heart. Why some of you, you will have four new shirts that you have not crossed. You see that this brother is wearing one every day, one shoe every day. Instead of you to carry and give, you will first turn the brother to outside before you now come out one shirt and give it. You will even go back and say, what is this? They didn't say you get money before. What is it they get out? You may think it in your heart, you may tell somebody. But that means you don't have the fruit of the spirit. As workers, we need the fruit of the spirit. We need love. We need joy. We need peace. We need patience. We need kindness. We need goodness. Inside of us, we need to be faithful. We need to be gentle. Now your feet. You and I need self-control. And God says, if you don't have any of these things, you have not even started. The Holy Spirit will walk in you through the Word of God. So if you are here, you are a believer that does not study God's Word or read the Bible. Ask me, ask your neighbor, how will the Holy Spirit work? You don't read the Bible. Sunday to Sunday, you come to church, you carry by way here on top, ask of uh, uh, like a children by the way they know they carry God. So he can he start to read. No personal relationship with God. The Holy Spirit will walk through you through the word of God. And he will use the power of the scripture to convince you and influence you in your way of thinking. And this one, he does it to shape you to become a godly person. The scripture according to 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 has been given to us to inspire us, to be useful to us, to teach us the truth, to make us realize that we are wrong, 
and where we are wrong in our life, it corrects us away from our wrong thing and it teaches us what is right. God uses it to prepare us and equip us unto all good work. The word of God. Show me a man that does not study in the world. I show you a man that does not be a person. Do not be deceived. A lot of people come out according to what Pastor Peter preached that day and says, fear and prophet. Some will come and tell you the color of your pants and the amount, the bank you are using and the last three number of your account. They will call things that are not their business. They will call things that does not edify the ministry. They will call things that have no business with what they are there for. And they will say they are prophets. If you don't, any prophecy that comes must have its basis in what? In the word of God. So, for the Holy Spirit to work with you, to make sure it makes you more like Jesus Christ, you need to marry the word. Marry the word of God. The goal of the Holy Spirit is to make us more and more like Christ. So if you are a believer, you are a Christian, and you are born again, and you are not more like Christ, please cry to God. Let the Holy Spirit come to you. Let him walk in you. Let him feel away the Adamic nature. And let him feel away the sinful nature. And let him give you power to witness. No matter what he He must give you power to preach. The Timothy 1 says, He will encourage you to preach the word of God. Not to be afraid. Not to be timid. Moses said, I cannot talk. I'm a Samaritan. But this God encouraged him. And at the end of the day, Moses became a believer. So the power of the Holy Spirit is what will give you what will reflect in your nature. It does not take away you. It only takes away the Adamic nature. The negative things, the wrong things. And it looks for the good things inside you and announces it. Satan does not give any gift. What Satan does, he copy God. God. If Satan knows that you are singing in his speech, he will carry you and promise to make you the best number one singer on earth. Now lie and take your blood and tell you to do sacrifice. Now lie. Now that thing where they inside you ain't see. Now in the use. A small girl confessed to me how she got initiated into witchcraft. As we were being a deliverer, she said uh, a common name is called Ashe. What is Ashe? In Yoruba, Ashe means authority. Let me tell you the truth. That young girl has been ordained from her mother's womb with a prophetic tongue. If she says so be it, that is how it will be. So the devil got that part of her and started using that tongue to destroy the lives of people. She confessed that if they want to deal with her father or collect something from her father, they will call the father into the deal. She will go and command the father what to do. As as he's sleeping in his bed, the father will appear in the room and she will tell you what to do. And in the morning, you see the father doing it. Ashe. They didn't give her. They only add bad to the good that was in her. And that's what the devil does. But the Holy Spirit now takes this inborn gift in you and brighten it and shine the light and make it better. Sometimes I ask him, Why do you treat me? You know me, I have bad gifts. I don't even see myself qualified. But he must have put some things in me. Do you think that the story of the talent, five talents, two talents, one talent, do you think you will see Kali come and give you money or something? You are born with that talent. It's already in you. Whether it is one or, or two or five, everybody comes with a talent. When you come closer to God, when you become the friend of the Holy Spirit, that talent will now revolve and come out shining. I don't want to talk too much. This is a message for the school class. But thank God it's being recorded, so maybe they will agree to listen to it, or we will play it in the next workout meeting for everybody to listen. Now, the Holy Spirit does another thing. It will guide you into all truth. If you want life, it is the will of God for your heart. So they tell you, but I lie. You just talk like, change your story, change that to true. How many of you don't hear that kind of thing? Yeah, I don't hear. You know, go rest. No, let me rest. 
Even when you embellish story, you tell me that you don't have thought and papers. Talk and review. No, if you, if you forget the story, shut up, no talk the story. But if you must talk the story, talk and review. Ask me to remind you. Because the only thing can remind you of all things. Sometimes you even see that maybe you want to talk out of point and you're on phone with somebody. The phone will just cut. But you think it's network that cut you. It's the only thing that loves you. I don't want you to expose yourself in a nonsense manner that cuts the phone. When the person calls back, you now make up your mind not to talk to you again. You will change. Those are ways they need to be careful and keep us from exposing ourselves. If you are a child of God and you keep on doing bad, keep on doing bad, you keep on your past to high blind, your past to no change. Eh? Shall I? Your past may not see. God did not expose it to him because God loves you and is giving you long road to return. The day the long road finish and you know you return. Now, if now adultery is a do, then the man will come like this every day of his year. God chastised those women, Lord. His children will give them long growth. Amen. Amen. But the long growth does not mean I will continue to sin. A great thing about it. He don't take liberty for laughing. The Holy Spirit does not condone all those things. When you sin against God, or you sin in your body, you grieve the Holy Spirit. You lie. You don't show love. You grieve the Holy Spirit. Please make up your mind. You want to make heaven. You want to be a worker. You want to be a child of God. You must ask Him to help you daily. God says, I die daily. What it means is that I don't know too much. Even with the little I know, I see they ask God to kill me. I'm not perfect. I'm still subject to mistake because I'm living in the flesh. But once I realize my mistake, I repent. I get up and move on. If you don't repent and get up and move on, you go about looking for extra oil. The king of kings will come, and the ones who have their oil will go. So the Holy Spirit will guide us into what that the best thing. It will make you speak to speak, know the truth, and it will make you be a witness of the truth. The fourth thing is that the Holy Spirit to convict you of sin. If you sin, I don't need to go to the say, Well, you know, they play my van. Eh? I see what you do. I like David. Anytime God sent prophet to tell her, or you know, saying you bad things, David will quickly go on fasting, wear sack clothes, put our feet on his head, and be here and be repent. But nowadays we have Christians who are the Holy Spirit reminding us and then they will be telling God like Saul why they did not obey fully. I see the fact right now. I won't call it a sacrifice for you. God said, kill everybody. Kill the king. Kill every king. You now arrange the fact right. Keep for honor. And when the Holy Spirit is not giving you, you start telling him, is it not for your own good? God, is it not for your own good? You want us to use the little, little amount in the church? I have to take this bribe. I have to take this extra money. I have to cheat this person so that I can come and pay the pastor or pay tithes in the church. Is how much is the offering? Two thousand, three thousand. If I don't do this one, I will have it. That was what for this. Somebody tell us to show me more. The Holy Spirit will convince you of your sin. Whether you agree or not, He will let you know. The Holy Spirit will reveal God's word to you. Many, many, pete, pate, all passing. That means that day, those days, now believe that they do. I make their life and for God. But for you, you are now a New Testament believer. God will write it in your heart. Show me to not forget what God is. Close this chapter. Please, I don't want to see. Linda, I am warning you. It will be your heart. It will be staring your conscience. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And please don't ignore it. Because the Holy Spirit will not keep on knocking for too long. And Jesus Christ signed the knock at the door forever. 
I stand at the door. I knock at the door of your heart. If any man open and call, I will come in and talk with him. Jesus is always at the door. But the Holy Spirit will get time for rubbish. He only get time for those who get time for God. That is the point. And the Holy Spirit, I will walk in you to be that perfect in you. You see, sometimes when you see me, someone praying relentlessly, tirelessly for three hours, not be practical and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes you, you will pray and you will lift up your voice. They will say, don't shout. You don't have control by yourself. The Holy Spirit. As workers, let's go back to that level. The Holy Spirit finally will bring us closer to other believers. If you see somebody where they say, I don't want to, I want to stay on my own, I don't want their wala, I don't want their God people. Eh, uh, the Holy Spirit is not there in you. Holy Spirit will make you love your neighbor. Holy Spirit will make you love the other believer. Holy Spirit will change your soul. So we are going to pray. Remember the truth of the truth. You can open your Bible to the letter and begin to talk to God. Father, I need love. Help me. I cannot do this work without you. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Begin to pray. Pray after that, we will not leave prayer one by one. After each other, we close and pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So begin to talk to God and say, Lord, I need you in my heart. Come and pray. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. Come into my heart. 